Hi. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to connect a REST web service to an Azure database. Um, I've created a typical Maven REST database using Spring Initializer, and these were the settings I chose. Maven Project, Java, uh, whatever version of Spring Boot you want, um, Group ID, etc. I chose JAR 11. Now, this is the important stuff. You need the Spring Boot Dev Tools, you need Spring Web, and you need the MS SQL driver. This, of course, is the JDBC driver that allows Java to talk to MySQL, or excuse me, to Azure. I have an Azure database running in the clouds. I'm connected to it locally with SSMS. Name my database is Control 2021. When I do select star from book, which is my book table, and this book table comes from Philip Pratt's Guide to SQL, um, you see the data they have. When I take a look at my book table, I have five strings or chars. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a user to that can only read from this database. Whenever you have a forward or a web serving database like I have here, you want to be very careful with who you allow connect to that database. Um, so I'm going to create a simple user for this video. I'm going to delete that user at the end of this video as well. All right, so. We're going to um, stay here in SSMS. I'm going to scroll down to security. Security for the entire system. And we go down here to logins. Oops, wrong security. I need that later. I'm going to do a new login. And a whole bunch of stuff comes up. This is all fine. I'm going to simplify this with REST user. And I'm setting my password to be password. Please don't ever use that in reality. Again, I'm going to delete this account when we're done. I'm going to execute this. Oh, it's not going to let that. Oh... See if it's happy about this. All right, so it likes passwords, capitalized like that. We better hang on to that. Now I need to come up to my database and expand security. And I need to right click users and do a new user. Again, a whole bunch of stuff pops up. Again, here I'm going to put rest user here. For login rest user and default scheme would be DBO. If you have different schemas over here, use your schema. And then I'm going to make sure that this person is not an owner. I'm going to make them just data reader. And I'll put in there rest user. Run this. Good. Good, I've done them both right. I'll delete the comments here so you can see what I did on one screen. If you want more power, you've got data reader, data writer, etc. Um, but again, once you have a web facing database, be very careful with who you allow to connect and who you allow to change because you can't control it once that username and password gets out of there. Okay, so we're now going to start writing our code. And like we do, we're going to create a folder for our controller. I'm going to call it Henry. And inside of here, I need a database, or excuse me, I need a class for the database table, and I need a controller for the, the class. So I'm going to call my class book.java. And I... These are my properties. Um, it makes sense to use the same field names here that you do in your tables. And if you're not sure what those are, SSMS will show that to you when you expand Henry and book. 
setters, getters, constructors, all that good stuff. I need to fix an import here. All right, now I have a class. This class will be used when I pull my data down off the database. I'm going to use this with Jackson to convert it over into a, a JSON document. All right, so now I need a controller. You know, of course, it's called book controller. And this is where we're going to do all of our work. Oops, I did that wrong. Why don't you go away? Let's so create a file this time. Full controller at Java. So we need Spring REST controller in there. Spring Boot application. Oh, I don't need Spring Boot application. Take it back. I just need REST controller. Inside, I, of course, have to handle my connection. So I'm going to create a, a GET request. So I'm going to respond on Henry to get, and I need public, I'll use response entity here. i got to fix a bunch of imports. Easily done by dot star there and a Java Udo importer for that list. Okay, so all books need to return something. Inside of all books we'll create a list that's eventually gonna hold all my books. All right, so I'm going to need to fire a postman here to test this. I'm going to start my service and see if it did everything right. I get back blank. We're good. Um, if there was an error, this wouldn't have launched. Okay, so I know my controller is responding, so now we need to do some database specific stuff here. So I need to add another import. Import Java SQL star. And then you get a connection string going here. So I'm going to go visit my database on the web. I skipped a couple steps here, but I'm in my database. I'm going to show my database connection strings. And each one of these is important, but since I'm connecting with Java, I'm going to go JDBC. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to hang on to that. Your password here is going to be my password. Everything else is pretty much okay. So I'm 
need that here momentarily. So create a variable type book. I'm going to create my connection string. And it's this big long mess. I'll turn on word wrap. And put your password in here. Don't use the quotes or the curly braces. My username is incorrect as well. I'm not going to use control ads. I'm going to use my user that I created. I call it a rest user. Semicolon at the end. Again, this is going to be deleted momentarily after we get done with this. So now we need to build our connection, build a statement, run some SQL, and get a result set. So I'm going to connect to the database. And these guys all need to run in a try catch, which is rather yelling at me. And SQL exceptions should be plenty for these guys. I'll move this guy up in there as well. Now, do yourself a really solid favor before you test this REST service and start swearing that it doesn't work. Go back and make sure that your SQL is correct. I don't know how many times I've had a student tell me, my REST service doesn't work, my program doesn't work. I'll say, does the SQL work? And they'll say, yes, control it works. And it doesn't. So I know my SQL is good here. If it's not good, don't even try to go on. And then you need results set to catch the data. Execute query. Runs a query and returns data back. If you're doing something like an update, you just do execute. All right, so now I'm going to handle this. If there's a problem, it's probably in SQL. Okay. So I'm going to return a new response entity like I did on here. Except I'm going to add to the response. I'm going to set the, um, the string for the error. And instead of OK, I'll send back like, you know, internal service area. So if one of these things generates an exception, it's most likely the SQL. It'll yell at me and send it back. And I'll make sure I close my connection here. And let's see if Postman's still happy. I should still get back the same response. I do. If I mess up my password, I go Linuxy on it, lose the A. Login failed. So I get my error back if I make a mistake there. So I know what's going on. And you as a programmer should be responding to your errors. And you should be looking for your errors. Okay, so um, we know my SQL works. Now all I have to do is read from the SQL database and send it back as a JSON document. Surprisingly, it's not that hard. I'm going to use a while loop. While my results set, next. 
And what I'll do is here is I'll walk through each one of the lines and result set, which should be all of my lines for my table, and I'll add it to my book. So I'm going to set each one of these guys. Doesn't matter the order you do these things as long as you spell everything right. Like I didn't there. Okay, so get string book code matches up to the table. So you have got book code, title. Get string can also be done numerically zero, one, two, three, four, five. It get really complicated after like more than three or four columns. So I just like to use the names. I'm just gonna go in order here so I don't forget one. Title. Careful on caps. Sometimes it matters, sometimes it doesn't with these. It depends on how you set your correlation types up in SQL Server. I assume they always matter. What's next type? All right, so I'm going to verify that I did that correct. So I'll look at my field names again. Book code, title, publisher code, type, paperback, it looks good. Inside the while loop, once I've read one of these, I'll add it to the response. And I'll save it right. If I've done everything correctly, Postman should now give me my books in JSON format. Look at that. It works. All right, so what you learned today was how to connect REST to Azure. Uh, my REST, of course, is running locally, but you could easily migrate this up to the Azure cloud and run it from there. Um, you saw how to connect the database, both the connection string from portal.azure, um, how to handle a SQL exception, and then how to write it into JSON. All right, thanks for watching. Good luck.